Okay, guys, so to get us started, we have this riddle. Riddle me this. You throw away the outside and cook the inside. Then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What did you eat? You can go put your answers in the chat. Again, you throw away the outside and cook the inside. Then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What did you eat? You okay. guys are on top of it. Yes, the answer is corn. Feel free to use that tomorrow. Um, you guys, here's our menu for this evening. Um, we're going to be serving up a three course meal, if you will. Um, first, we're gonna start off with our appetizers with a quarter two overview. Um, next, we'll serve the main course, which is our curriculum resources. And lastly, we'll finish with our dessert course featuring ideas on customizing our Amplify lessons. So again, we are grateful that you're here and we hope that something that we cover today will be of use to you. Hey, these are our core values of Dallas ISD. We are committed to effective instruction, equitable access and outcomes, and excellence. Our objective for today is to learn how to effectively plan instruction for quarter two. Okay, we'll do that by beginning the internalization process by previewing quarter two content, navigating the curriculum resources to plan for effective instruction, and by customizing lessons to provide equitable access and outcomes for all of our students. Mario. <laughs> Okay, so let's begin with our um, first round of appetizers. This is going to be our quarter two overview. So we've talked a lot, I feel like, um, with teachers and administrators about um, internalizing lessons, right? So what we're going to do today is we're just kind of going to see how do we start? How do we look at this overview of what we'll be teaching? So what I want you to do first of all is to imagine that you want to improve your health and well-being. So you've done research and you're going to subscribe to the one of the many eating regimens out that are out there that's going to help you make your health goals, okay? Before you commit, you've probably read about it, you got a general idea of what is required, how to begin it, and the trajectory that you can expect to take um, on that journey, right? So this bird's eye view of your new eating reg uh, regimen is a lot like um, looking over the year at a glance documents that we provide here with the, in the RLA department. These documents will show you the instructional trajectory for the entire year. You can see your units, your TEKS, your assessment dates, genres, and so forth on these documents. In a moment, we'll review how to find these, where they're housed, but meanwhile, we're going to drop the links in the chat for the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade YAGs. Okay, once you get your link, please open up your YAG for your grade level yeah. and look at the bottom left-hand corner for Ooh, quarter okay. two and take a look at what's going on in quarter two. All right. Mute. Okay, so now we're gonna wet our appetites for quarter two by looking at the upcoming units. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade will cover, we'll all cover the second half of unit B and all of unit C. So here we have provided these units at a glance from Amplify. Again, sixth grade. Um, quarter two will continue with 6B mysteries and investigations. So this hanging hashtags is an elevation strategy that uses images to build background knowledge to get students thinking about what they will be learning. Remember, these strategies can be modified to fit your students' needs and specific activities. Okay, so for today, we're going to focus on the images and content on this poster. Okay, and then you're going to create hashtags about um, the information. Okay, so 
looking at this poster, I see a mosquito. I see a detective, a microscope. I see a man looking like he's from some part of history and something that kind of looks like test tubes with something yellow coming out of it. Okay. And if I look at the content, I see text red. We're reading about the yellow death. We're reading about fever 1793 um, and some Sherlock Holmes excerpts as well. So after reading over this unit at a glance, okay, I can see the big idea is investigators approaches to medical and criminal mysteries, which you guys have already looked at 6B. So you know this information. Now, using this hashtag strategy, my three hashtags, my first hashtag would be discovery through evidence, hashtag science meets fiction, hashtag medical and criminal mysteries. Okay, so these would be three hashtags I could use to kind of preview or the hashtags that encompass 6B as a unit. Okay, so now we are going to look at 7B, which is character and conflict. So seventh grade teachers, you've already started unit 7B. Okay, so some hashtags for this unit poster would be hashtag character conflicts, hashtag multi-genres on black history, and hashtag family and societal challenges. Okay, and that's just based on looking at the images. There's a family at the bottom. Um, there was, if you go back, Tony, a couple of times. Back arrow. Yeah, sorry. Um, the image at the top, looking at the text read, they have some poetry, they have a memoir. Um, a Raisin in the Sun is a play. So those are just some things I pulled from that unit poster. Okay, and then we'll move on to eighth grade. Okay, on this poster, I see a prominent image of Frederick Douglass and many people who appear to be protesting. I see a new sproutling being held by the roots and a young man reading a book. I see that we will read the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass along with other accounts of the Civil War, including the Gettysburg Address. So after reading over this unit at a glance, my hashtags would be hashtag fight for equality, hashtag abolition boss Douglas, and hashtag words at Gettysburg. Okay, so this hanging hashtag strategy is what we used to kind of give an overview oh, yeah, of find, the units the at a glance. Yeah, I had to go to the trader. Uh -oh. Okay. All right. So now what we want you to do is we're going to give you a couple minutes to review the units at a glance for unit C. Okay, so we're going to drop these links in the chat. The grade level posters should be in the chat. Do you want to do that? Let me do that, Tony. Thank you. Okay, so the grade level posters are now in the chat. Okay, so we want you to review your grade level poster for 6C, I'm sorry, for 7C, 6C or 8C, okay, whichever grade level you teach. And we want you to come up with your own hashtags as a preview of what students will be learning in that unit, okay? Then we'd like for you to post those hashtags on the palette, palette, on the Padlet, okay? So the links are in the chat for the posters. Select your grade level. And then you'll be creating a hashtag or a couple of hashtags to put on the Padlet. Okay, so I'll go ahead and drop the Padlet link in there as well for y'all to start on. Okay, and on the Padlet, it's um, divided by grade level, so by unit, and you can just drop them in there. I'm going to go ahead and post the attendance link as well, just in case anyone did not get it. And we're going to give you about two minutes to work on that.
Okay, so we're hashtags gonna... coming in. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. We we have some good hashtags coming in on the Padlet. Mm -hmm. Hold on, just a moment. I'm trying to make sure I'm not on speaker. Hold on. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> you guys are funny. These are awesome. I love it. Mm, very cool. What's with chocolates? I gotta say, the Saint Willy Wonka's Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory made me giggle. We do want yeah. to apologize if there's background noise this evening. We're all in here doing QCT together, so um, we do apologize if there's little background. Um, Rakesha, did you need the um, posters or just the Padlet? Posters, maybe. I'll go ahead and post them. Um, okay. There you go. And the Padlet's on there as well. Great. Yep, whole brains versus localizers. Yep. Yep. Okay, so also we wanted to go ahead and give you um, the, let me see, I'm going to put it in the, looking for the, there it is. Okay, so in the chat, I'm also going to put a forced copy to um, the hanging hashtag graphic organizer that we have right there on the slide. Um, this is for you to use. Everything is on the Elevation website, which we will go into in a little bit, uh, kind of show you around. But that's just for you to have a copy of the hanging hashtag graphic organizer. We put it in a Google Doc. Yes. Um, thank you, guys. I really enjoyed um, these. I love Know My Noggin. <laughs> that one gets some snaps for me. I wish this had like a reaction thing where I could mm -hmm. heart it like I can on social media. Okay, let's get back into our presentation. And we'll talk a little bit about unit materials here. Okay, so just as... Just as a reminder, um, Amplify has included documents to help with internalization. Um, under the material section, the unit background document provides teachers with additional information just about the topic that will be um, taught in the unit. Mm -hmm. um, and then the planning for the unit section lists any learning apps throughout the unit. So for example, um, in 6B, the Spotlight app is used um, as well as the Evidence app for the Sherlock Holmes um, activities. So we put this as a highlight just so that you guys are aware that it will ask you to, um, you know, spotlight a, a student's work or um, take the evidence, app, open the evidence app and put evidence in there so that you have prior knowledge of that and can kind of play with it before introducing it um, whole class. The, um, the caregiver letter yeah. provides families with an idea of what students will be doing, reading and learning throughout the unit. Um, it will also include a sensitive content right, so note in applicable if applicable. Hey, we did just want to point out very quickly because I'm sure eighth grade teachers you have or will soon encounter um, the, the uh, unit B about liberty and equality in that Frederick Douglass text. Um, I just want to say it again, um, you know, please, please, please make sure you send those parent letters home to parents because of the sensitive content um, contained within Unit B. Um, this uh, clip or the snip that I, I have right here on the screen is from the parent letter. This is what the parents um, receive. 
um, to let them know that the Amplify has not edited the language in Douglas's published account. Um, the censorship that is there is only because it was the original censorship from when it was published in 1845. So I know we had questions last year about, you know, well, you know, some words are, you know, marked out in some art and some of the words that aren't blocked out or you know rather offensive and um, we do understand that but amplify believes it's important to show the language that frederick Douglass used so um anyway we just want to make sure that we're sending the message out please 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 communicate with your administrators um your students and your um parents all the stakeholders that this unit has some sensitive content in it. It may be, you know, a place that we can um, have conversations around appropriate language and, you know, respectful speak to one another. So I just want to make sure that we we stamp that to make sure that you um, take this back to your campuses. And if you haven't yet, that's okay, but please send home these parent letters as soon as possible if you're in that a unit A to B. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our main course this evening. This is the meat of our meal. This is the curriculum resources. This is gonna be the stuff that really um, sustains your lessons, okay? So now we want you to imagine that you've just um, gotten a new recipe that you wanna to add to this new eating regimen that you subscribe to, okay? Now I want you to think, when you receive a new recipe that you're excited to try out, what do you do? What do you do when you get a new recipe? Go ahead and put it something in the chat. What's your process? Do you guys have anything that you do with a recipe? You just get get try them out. <laughs> call you might call my mom too. <laughs> Shopping list. Yes. Yep ingredients oh I'm sorry they can hear me in high school <laughs> okay I like this um, I'm gonna customize it from the get-go okay very good thank you guys for um, indulging me there so I just want to kind of expand on these ideas that you guys have already um, presented here. Um, the first thing I do when I get a recipe is I read it carefully. I visualize the steps. I think about all the ingredients. I make sure that I can do all the cooking skills and that I have all the right cookware. Okay. Do I have all the right tools that I need? Then I look through my pantry, my refrigerator and see if I already have ingredients that I can use. Um, if so, do I have enough? Do I need to get more? If I need to get more, I need to write a grocery list, right? And go grocery shopping. Um, some some items for recipes, as you guys know, are quick grab items, right? And then others, we need to evaluate that nutritional information that comes on um, the box or on the product to make sure that we're choosing the best ones for our recipe. Um, when it's time to cook, I then gather all of my ingredients, my utensils, the pots and pans, so that they're all readily available when I need them. Um, now, the first time I try out a recipe, for me, I usually go step by step and I don't improvise much because I am a terrible cook. Okay, so I'm like, I'm going to follow these directions to the T. Um, now, when I eat the recipe for the first time, I evaluate whether or not I liked it, right? I think about tweaks I might want to make to it next time. Do I want to add a little more spice or do I need to cut back the spice or something? Um, and I make all these notes on the recipe cards so that I don't forget. Okay, now when I'm ready to make the recipe again, I know if I need to add a little more of this or a little more of that um, to make it more to my liking. Okay, and if you haven't figured it out yet, um, our new recipe is Amplify. So take a moment to look at this recipe for an Amplify lesson. You can see what you're cooking, what ingredients you need, and what directions to follow to pull it off. Okay, on the left, you already have these um, ingredients, so to speak, in your Amplify Pantry, okay? The first thing you'll want to do when preparing for a lesson is to read it carefully, visualize it, internalize it like you would a new recipe. By reading the text and the lesson brief, 
um, and also familiarizing yourself with the teaks and any materials provided, you are ready to begin making your recipe. Now for the activities, um, think of the activities in Amplify as, about, as the ingredients about which you need to read the nutritional information. Okay, which activities within an Amplify lesson hold the most nutritional value, so to speak? Okay, which are essential to the success of the lesson? Now we're gonna look at some other ingredients to get our classrooms cooking. To find these ingredients on the right, we need to go shopping. So you guys know that we have um, Curriculum Central, but for our purposes tonight, we're gonna call it Curriculum Central Market. And some of these things that are circled here are going to be available at our Curriculum Central Market. Um, and we're going to go there now so that we can talk about how to find the IPCs where this information is located. Okay, so this year, like Tony said, we're using um, the Google site Curriculum Central. Okay, so Curriculum Central Market. On this site, you'll, you'll find the district's curriculum planning documents, including the YAGs, the Year at a Glance, instructional planning calendars, and clarity documents. And as a reminder, this is just how to access the documents. Curriculum Central. Then you're going to hover over Content Departments. Scroll to RLA Dual 2324. And then once the spreadsheet opens up, you'll select at the very bottom there are tabs and you'll select 2324 RLA 6 through 8. Okay, so this is just a refresher on how to access your um, IPCs. Okay, and then you'll select your grade level and it's week by week. Okay, so our IPCs, or those instructional planning calendars, are weekly documents that pace out the Amplify lessons. Think of them as your weekly meal plan. Okay, by planning ahead, we are less likely to resort to last minute fast food, right? For those of you who meal plan, um, and we know that fast food is not necessarily good for us. So when we use the IPCs, similarly, when we use the IPCs to plan for the upcoming week, um, we are making sure that we're planning so that we're not filling our week full of instruction that is convenient, but maybe lacking in substance. Okay, so let's take a closer look at an IPC. Um, this one is from week one of sixth grade for quarter two. Okay, now the week number is appears at the top of the document. In addition, the dates, the date range of this week are at the top of the document as well. And below are five days, each day representing, or each column representing a day of the instructional week. Okay, down here at the, towards the bottom, you will see which lessons you'll be teaching on which days. And these are linked directly to Amplify. Below the lesson, you'll find the t a link to the text that they'll be reading in the lesson. In addition, the IPCs list the TEKS that will be covered in that lesson, as well as the learning objective and success criteria for the lesson. Now, these other links right here connect you to the clarity document for that lesson, which we'll talk about more in just a moment. Notice that you have links to bridging the knowledge lessons, um, which we also call concrete to abstract in middle school, engagement strategies and links to the SER or and or ECR revised prompts and their exemplars. So there is one clarity document per lesson provided by the RLA department to support you with teaching Amplify. So each clarity document contains several components to support your instruction. So let's take a quick look at each of the components on the document. At the top of each lesson, we've listed the TEKS that Amplify has assigned to that lesson. Okay, next we have the question stems. 
These are the kinds of questions that can be used to assess students on a specific standard. We have only provided STEMs for TEKS that are likely to be assessed on STAR. Teachers can use any of these throughout the lesson to gauge students' understanding and to provide exposure to the kinds of questions they may see on STAR. Okay, below the question stems, you'll find the learning objective and success criteria for the lesson. These are ready for you to post in your classrooms. Then we've added a new section to our clarity document this year called concrete to abstract. Think of these as bridging the knowledge. Okay, these are activities to build background knowledge about content and or reinforce reading and writing skills. And notice that on the clarity document, on this clarity document, a video has been provided to help students make connections between the yellow fever that is talked about in unit 6B and something similar that they've experienced in their own lives, which is COVID-19. Okay, so it's just a quick video to kind of bridge that knowledge between yellow fever and what they know COVID-19 is. Okay, next underneath that, we have the engagement strategies. As you can see here, we sometimes simply call out where there is engagement already embedded in the Amplify um, lesson. Other times we may provide a strategy or idea that teachers could consider adding to the lesson to increase engagement. So for example, here we have linked the Lead Forward Strategies playlist, which has several instructional strategies that teachers can plan for intentionally. As, as you guys internalize the lessons, you, get, you can choose a strategy from the playlist to increase engagement, provide practice without penalty, encourage interaction among students and see and hear students thinking. This is only one example of engagement. You may also see Kagan strategies, IFL strategies and elevation strategies, uh, just to name a few. We'll take a closer look at elevation here in just a bit. Okay, and then we have, like Tony said, we have included the SCR and or ECR um, section of the clarity document. Most lessons have one or the other. Amplify provides regular opportunities for students to write about what they are reading. And in some cases, we've modified the writing activities to look more like SCR and ECR props. So it'll kind of be rewritten to mirror the SCR or the ECR, okay? Um, in addition, we've included the exemplars to go with those um, writing responses. All right, so think of the components of the Clarity documents as your quick grab ingredients, okay? They can be easily added to your lesson, just like adding a can of beans to your recipe. <laughs> that can of beans feels ominous, but they're quick grab items, right? Okay, so moving on it right along, remember that all of those elements that we just went over on the Clarity documents are included on your IPCs, okay? And these three sections, concrete to abstract, engagement strategies, and the SCR and or ECR exemplars are bookmarked to the Clarity document for that lesson. Okay, so you've got three links but they will take you to the same clarity document because there's one per lesson. They'll just, they're just bookmarked to the particular section. Keep in mind that this is how you will access all clarity documents. They have to be accessed through the IPCs. They are not housed in any sort of other kind of spreadsheet. Okay. They're housed directly on the IPCs. Okay. Now, after gathering all of the ingredients for your new recipe, the next step is to start thinking, how will you deliver the recipe or the lesson? Sorry. <laughs> um, remember that Amplify includes or provides instructional guides, which is a great place to start. As you go through the instructional guides for each activity, ask yourself, which parts of the lessons do you already know how to teach well and which parts do you need to plan for more intently? Teachers may want to follow the program, Amplify, or the recipe, so to speak, as it is at this point, okay? Eventually, as you become more comfortable with the program and the content, you'll find that you'll want to customize the lesson to match your taste and the taste of your students, okay? Um, the part of customization we're going to highlight tonight is folding in elevation strategies, and we'll do that in just a moment. 
Okay, in review, our main course review, um, this slide is basically a review of everything that we just talked about. Okay, so we wanted to gather together what documents might teachers need when they're doing their unit and lesson internalization. Where are they going to find all of these things? Because we know that sometimes it feels like you're getting lost when you're going to the big, you know, RLA resources to find out where everything is. So we've tried to show where to go, point you in the right direction. And then also, what do you do with these documents? Okay, what are you going to do with it? How does it help you plan for your instruction? We just thought this might be helpful, especially for newer teachers but also anybody who's new to Amplify, just to help them navigate all of the resources um, provided by Amplify and the district. Okay, moving on to our final success criteria involving customizing lessons to provide equitable access and outcomes for all students. Okay, so when we talk about customization, we want to highlight the district resource elevation. Okay, elevation strategies uh, provide practical ways to differentiate instruction for students across all content areas. These strategies provide educators with instructional activities to make content accessible to all students. And there are over a hundred different strategies in the elevation library, which can be accessed through Clever. Okay, and we'll show you in just a second how to get there. But for quarter two, we're highlighting four specific elevation strategies, writing windows, Q triple essay, expert and novice in inside outside circle. Okay, let's take a look at the Elevation website and how they are organized and now how they have organized their strategies uh, by engagement purpose. This makes it a little easier to search, sort, and or browse. Okay, so this is what it looks like if uh, you click the link. If you click that picture, Tony, it'll take you to the website. So they've um, organized it by engagement purpose. Okay, and it's um, to build background, clarify input, fortify output, foster interactions. Uh, they have a section on developing academic language, assessing language and learning, developing socio sociocultural competence and advanced biliteracy. And I know that's a long list, but you'll see it in just a second in the, in the, on the website. If you click on strategies at the top or activities, yeah. Okay, so here on the left-hand side, you see uh, the different categories, the different types of purposes um, for each strategy. Okay, and this is really how you um, how you can search for specific things. You can browse through. Um, click on hanging hashtags, Tony. That first one. Okay, so this is the one we did earlier with the unit posters. And as you can see, it labels them. This is for building background and demonstrating and experiences, okay? It tells you what the students will be doing. It gives you all different kinds of information, um, how to do it, instructions on how to do it. And it even sometimes gives you examples of what it looks like, okay? And if you notice in the top right corner, there is a video of hanging hashtags in motion, okay? On the right underneath that video, there are all of the documents needed to implement that strategy. So for example, the uh, forced copy we sent you in the chat earlier was a Word doc turned into a Google doc real quick for y'all to use. It also comes in a PDF format. Uh, the instructions I believe are also there. And then it gives you different links to different websites that might help you um, brainstorm how to implement it in your classroom. Okay, so each strategy has its own version of what this looks like right here. Okay, so we, we've linked that for you. Again, it's in Clever. You have to be logged in though. Um, just make sure you're logged in before clicking elevation. Okay, and then we want to focus on those four strategies for quarter two. Okay, so let's take a look at those four that we highlighted. Okay, writing windows. So using writing windows, students brainstorm while viewing an image related to the content. On the graphic organizer provider, provided, students will list what they see, okay, make connections and write about their thinking using, using the sentence frames provided. Okay, next we have QSSA. 
Okay, with this strategy, students use the directions to engage in questions using hand signals, sentence stems, and collaboration. The third strategy we're highlighting is inside outside circle, where students meet with multiple peers to discuss a prompt. Okay, with each rotation, students should gain a deeper and deeper understanding of the content. Okay, so for this graphic organizer, you can see how the line starts as a dotted line, it goes to a solid line, and then it gets thicker because with each interaction, they should have a clearer, better, uh, stronger understanding. Okay, and then on the same note, the expert and novice strategy applies the same idea, except one student is the expert and the other one is, is the novice. And um, one student, uh, the expert answers all the questions and put in posed by the novice, and then they switch and rotate. Um, and throughout the rotation, students have a better understanding of the topic because they are asked different questions by different novices, okay? Again, these four strategies and lots more are on that Elevation website, so we highly encourage you guys to go in and look through those. We will also be implementing and embedding some strategies in our engagement portion of our Clarity document, so look out for those coming um, soon. Um, and remember, the hanging hashtags that we did earlier was also an elevation strategy. Okay, so now you will have some time to dive into the first week of quarter two. Okay, uh, we're going to put these links in the chat. Let me do it real quick. Okay, so here are uh, your direct links to the IPCs for week one. And we know week one is a short week. There are only three days because fall break is on that Thursday and Friday. So there should be three days worth of lessons on your IPC. And what we want you to do is look at that first week and keep in mind those elevation strategies that we've talked about. And what we want is for you to, to kind of review the lessons and think about where you could put and embed those elevation strategies in that first week. Okay, so open up your IPCs and think about where we could put um, those elevation strategies. Okay, then I've also linked the Jamboard for you to post your ideas. Okay, so if you, something pops in your head about um, Tuesday's lesson, you know, what could you do for that? Put it under whichever grade you are on a post-it on Jamboard, okay? So then by the time we're done, maybe we'll have some different ideas of how to embed those elevation strategies, okay? So we will give you a couple of minutes to do that. And then we will share it. All right, guys. So as you guys um, finish looking at your IPCs and discover ways to implement those uh, strategies, go ahead and put them on this board so y'all can re uh, refer back to it. Just some examples up here, um, a writing window for lesson 14 in sixth grade, show students the sa a sample Hippocratic Oath because that's what um, they will be reading about in that particular lesson. Eighth grade, it says activity three, utilize paraphrase T-chart, find a match in eighth grade, writing windows in eighth grade, it says dedicate activity three hanging hashtags. Students view images to internalize the Gettysburg address. That's great. Mm -hmm. So these are some great ideas. So please continue to add to it um, as you kind of look over week one so we can get some more ideas, okay? All right. Now looking at customization, I think we need to go back one, Tony. I need to refresh it, sorry. Oh. Um, looking at customization, just remember Amplify has included a section um, of differentiation opportunities for the unit and for the lesson. Okay, as you can see here, one more. 
Okay, in addition, there are some extension pieces in Amplify. Here's an example of a challenge writing embedded in the lesson, and these are optional, okay, as are the extended reading pieces, okay? And on each IPC, the honors document is linked um, under additional resources on your IPCs um, to provide some extension exercises for your students, okay? And it's not just for honors. This can be for any student in your classroom, okay? Um, in addition, we have the elevation strategies accessible through Clever. And <laughs> no, that's it. I think that was it. And okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to move on so quickly. Anyway. Okay. So you guys, that brings us almost to the end of our presentation today. If you have any questions or um, need any help with your planning, um, please consider coming to our, our language, our reading language arts office hours. We have them every Tuesday and Thursday from 4 p.m. until 530. Um, please consider registering in Cornerstone so that you get credit for it, but all you do is jump into this link, and um, we are sitting on there many times with the Amplify coaches themselves, and so we are happy to help you um, in any way that we can, um, and if you need a thought partner or if you need to um, think something out, we are happy to do that um, with you or answer any questions that you guys might have about your upcoming lessons, okay? Um, again, here is our reading language arts department with all of our contact information. As I said, and I just want to reiterate, we are here to help and to support you in your work as teachers. Mm -hmm.